back. And he brings it all the way back. Left back. Jesse Inquist open, coming across the middle, and breaks two tackles for the touchdown. Will have it, wide open. I'm not exactly sure. Side line, and he's going to go. Touchdown, third play, offensive play, with a little swing. Good evening, Hoppington football fans. Tonight, your hill is taking on the Medfield Warriors. I'm here, Rick Decina, with Dandy Don Lehman. And Don, uh, we time to reset the uh, the clock a little bit here since the last time we talked. Well, last time we were on the air, we had a 8-7 to seven loss to Ashland, uh, which was a tough one to take. Then on to Holliston last week, which certainly didn't turn out the way we planned, a 28-7 to seven loss. And back here now to Medfield. So what do you think has to happen to get back on the winning track you know it, 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 it was it was two tough games in a row two tough weeks here for the hillers and two completely different games i mean speaking about you know on the clock it was the clockers that the, you know the last time you and i were together here we watched that crazy ending there with the uh two you know fake, fake uh, field, field goal, goal. I mean, fake extra point fake extra point um so you know that was a tough loss for the hillers and they had to come back and then go to holliston which is just a you know always a difficult <laughs> task, and uh, you know what the, the Hillers I know you were not there, but uh, the Hillers played well last week. They were not manhandled by any sense of the word. They got beat on three really just long passes, and uh, and that's just the way it goes. So that was a tough loss. So now what these kids have to do, and the coaching staff is kind of have to like you said reset. You know now you got Medfield in, who's always tough here. And you've got Westwood coming up after this. You got to win these next two games and see where the playoff thing leads us. And Division Four South, I don't think is that powerful that uh, Hopkinton can't come out of that. So we'll see what happens. Well, as a as a two and three record right now, it's an uphill climb, and you have to win this one tonight, obviously. Definitely. Uh, and then you're at Westwood next week, and then you have to let the chips fall where they fall and see what happens. So they've dug a hole. Certainly, they can get out of it. Oh yeah. So tonight, homecoming. And uh, not a lot of people on the other field. So Medfield didn't get the message no, to show Med up early. They do, a lot of di they do a lot of dining in Boston tonight. <laughs> uh, apparently they must. But a big, a, a big crowd here tonight for the Hillers. We got the student section, the band, and the cheerleaders down here ready to go. And uh, it's a nice night for football. It did rain uh, hard yesterday, and this, this field does hold a lot of water. Uh, that may not be good, but uh, it certainly looks good for Yeah, it looks really good. They repainted the H in the middle there, and it, it, it looks uh, it looks great. Got the band, got homecoming, got balloons, got an American flag over there. We're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a break for the National Anthem, and we'll get right back at it. National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We will be accepting donations throughout the game as game of the Delta Concession Stand. Your generosity will help make a significant impact on the breast cancer and provide hope and inspiration to all those affected
Good rendition of the national anthem when the band is here. Nice cool night for football. We're ready to go. Uh, tonight, a couple of notes. Uh, it's crucial, crucial Catch Night, which is a fundraiser for cancer. And they are collecting money here at the at the stadium. Uh, not that, that uh, anybody on the listening to this can, can do anything or I don't even know where you'd send money at this point. But uh, Crucial Catch. A, a Dana-Farber, really anywhere, any cancer, any cancer research. National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We are also streaming on YouTube. Mr. Mike Tarosian got everything worked out. Uh, I understand we had some issues against Ashland a couple of nights ago, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's about it. We're going to get ready for the opening kickoff, where the Warriors will receive the ball in the north ends on the north side, and I can't see the numbers, but it looks like number seven, Michael Greitzer. Yeah, these tough – when the white uniforms, uh, Don, it's tough to tough to see what's going on. You're two weeks older than you were two weeks ago, That's right? That's true, and it's right Ooh. up the middle. And Greitzer, he's going to break it up down the left sideline. He's got the kicker alone. Kelly with the tackle at about the 37-yard line of the Hillers. Great return by number seven, Michael Greitzer. Well, you know, luckily, luckily their kicker is, uh, you know, one of their starting defensive tackles or defensive ends or whatever. Um, to make that tackle, but that opened up like the Red Sea, Rick. Uh, there were some good blocks there. He fielded it. It was a good kick by Brendan. He fielded it cleanly, though. Kid took it up, and that was a uh, touchdown-saving tackle there. Yeah, so not a great way to start the game. Certainly not the statement you want to make when you're coming out, but they'll start the drive at the 37-yard line. You know, when you play special teams, you've got to be – a lot of those kids that play it are not everyday players, so – Sometimes they're not they're not ready for game action and they weren't on that play. Midfield number thirty takes it straight up to, on the right side actually number thirty. I don't have a number thirty so thirty three. Sorry, number thirty three is uh, Cameron Junta. That was pretty much just a standard drive, uh, dive uh, up the middle from Medfield there. Now I'm trying to see who their quarterback is. They had number a, thirteen. He's number he's thirteen. Wide. He's listed as a wide receiver, Don. Right. So he was the number one. He is the was is or touted as the number one wide receiver in the uh, conference. Their starting quarterback got hurt, and now he has taken over at quarterback. So he's obviously a dual threat. But it's interesting that they start out with two pretty much dive right, dive, dive left. Well, we know he can catch the ball. We just don't know if he can throw the ball, right? I mean. So they Looks have like they're, I don't know if they're hurrying up or well, they're going they, to the middle They're in a wish, wishbone formation, Don. You know, I haven't seen this in a long time. And we got uh, flags on the play. I thought I heard the whistles, but they played through it. Yeah, they shouldn't have. It looked like they're going to call that. Defensive on. offside? Nah. I think it was offensive. They, they looked like they were trying to stop the play. Unless there was contact when they no, came across the No, it's nice defensive line. offside on the far side. Uh, so there must have been contact there. So the, the, the official, I mean, the, whoever's got the, the sticks has it wrong. He has fourth down, but it's going to be third and probably one. Medfield always plays Hopkinton tough at this, uh, on this field. In the Jim Gerard area era, they're three and one versus the Hillers. Well, at Dave Hughes Stadium, Medfield comes in zero and three and one and four overall. So they have to get something going. It's a quick hit right up the middle on the fullback, and nothing doing. It looks like Kelly on the tackle. Yeah, Saparoch just came in there and filled very well, made a nice tackle, and for that, it looked like he lost yardage on that. So it's going to be fourth and about one, and I mean you got to go for it. Oh, yeah. Don, I know a little something about this wishbone. I ran this wishbone back in 1980 for Holliston. <laughs> you look like you can <laughs> still run we, we it. Haven't, right? We haven't seen this in a while. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and this coach from Medfield has been around for a while, too. He's been around six or seven years. Yeah, and, we should um, note that uh, neither of us uh, had a chance to look at the media guide that Coach Sullivan I'm, throws out. I'm watching out. it right here. I'm oh, you have it on your phone? I'm reading right? it as we go. So it's a, a handoff to the right, and, and and Matt Brown breaks through and not even close to the line of scrimmage. Loses about four in the play. So they'll turn it over on downs. Great 
defensive stand to start the night, Don. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Rick, is they moved, it looks like they moved Brown to the line, uh, to his, his defensive end position that he played last year, or, or to the line. He's been playing free safety here throughout uh, the first five games or whatever. So they have Salyards back there, who's a sophomore. Uh, looks like he's playing both ways. Um, playing free safety, and they move Brown back up to the line, which he was an impact player last year. Mm. He looks like he's he going to do brother the same both, thing. Uh, had, had were impact players last year. Yeah. So a couple of receivers to the right, two backs as Deloya moves back, and it's a run to Matt Brown. He breaks a tackle in the backfield. He breaks a couple of more tackles, gets for about 13, 14 on the play, gets out to about the 48-yard line of the Hillers. Some nice blocking set up there. Matt read it well, turned it up, and ran hard as he always does, and that was a that's a great start for the Hiller offense. So it's first and ten with 8.40 to go in the first quarter. Now I guess Bedfield is missing one other lineman who's a, a pretty good player, so he's he's been injured. They've struggled with injuries the last few weeks, this Medfield Warrior team. And they look pretty tall in, in, on the line. Deloya, quick. Quick dump off to Deloya, picks up a few more. Total of about six yards. Should be second and four coming up. Yeah, it looks like they have some height, and I haven't seen. Uh, do they give heights and they weights do. here? Yeah. Okay. I mean, some of these teams have not, which I don't. I never get. But um. <laughs> yeah, they're always taller and heavier than they are anyway. So I don't know. <laughs> That's true. Does it really matter? No, not really. Actually, I think some of these Medfield fans are sitting on this side now that I look at it. But the other side looks pretty empty. Stay out of the wind, maybe. It's, I think it's pretty breezy out there. I'm not sure. Got Deloy out here, one on one. No, Deloy no, is in the oh, backfield. I'm sorry, yeah, who's that? Salyards, maybe. Okay. And another hand off to Brown. He same play they started to drive on, and he gets nowhere with that. And it's going to bring up about third, third and two. You know, you never know with the Hillers. Uh, two weeks ago against Ashland, they really, really ran the ball quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Did not throw. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know they, I don't know that that cost them the game. I don't think it did. But, the, you know, and then it's funny. They go into Holliston. They threw the ball pretty effectively last week. Okay. Um, they didn't score a lot of points, but they, they came out throwing. You never know what they're going to do because they're effective doing both. Um, it would be nice to set the line of scrimmage here, though. So we'll get third and, and one. And a pistol, a strong pistol left. And we've got timeout Hopkinton. Uh, see if I can keep track of those. So we didn't. He's only talking to Keller, so he didn't like something, or yeah, they saw something they didn't like, and uh, or or the play that they had had called, and you know you've got five timeouts here, you know you might as well use this is a big play early in the game, third and short. Uh, I'm guessing it, I guess you'd go for it twice if it. Well, if you it, would figure, but you know how about how about throwing a bomb right here? Yeah, how about it? I, I might do not, that. I, I would do that. I think that's why you're up here with me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well. All right, so it's a. Uh, eye formation, and straight ahead is Keller, and he gets, he gets, I don't know who the up back was, but uh, he didn't do him any favors, taking out his legs, trying to push him up. I, I actually, I, I missed that part, but it was, uh, that's it's totally opposite of what I, I was suggesting. Yeah, that's we not exactly throw it. a bomb and they <laughs> ran a sneak, so I don't know. Well, it, Again, it was effective. I'm up here, Sully's down there. <laughs> yeah, so it was effective, first down at the 41-yard line of the Warriors. These uniforms are very difficult to see numbers from the... The white uniforms. Yeah, from the Medfield team. They have very small numbers in the front, and they're tucked. A couple of receivers to the left. DeLoyer in motion is set now. And now it's DeLoyer straight up the gut, and he picks up about, we'll call it two, make it second and eight. This is kind of a new formation. I don't know if we've seen I, I've, we've seen Deloya on the jet sweep a little bit, but not necessarily lining up as a as a you know in the two back spot. I know he moved there in motion. Um, I did see on the guide that Zach um, uh, 
Zach Frank? Zach Frank's out. So maybe oh, he is. Yeah, I he's didn't, out. Oh, you're so, right. I haven't seen him in the game yet. Yeah. So they may um, give Luke some carries out of the backfield because of that. First pass of the game, hard throw, and it's caught. Brendan Kelly at the 30-yard line. She threw in the spot only Kelly could, could get to it. Yeah, that was a very good throw by Kelleher there. He kind of just dropped back. Kelly made a nice, uh, ran a nice route, made a nice little curl right there in front of 29, and it was an excellent throw by Kelleher. So that brings up first and 10 at the 30. Three wide receivers to the left, and it looks like Kelly wide right, and only Brown in the backfield with with Kelleher, and it's a quarterback draw, and he picked up picked up about four. I'll, we'll call it four. We'll call it uh, second and six. That that's a play, both that draw and that uh, read option that they have incorporated quite a bit this year, more than last year, and uh, Ryan's been running running a lot and effectively. You know, you got, you've got an experienced offensive lineup there. You've got uh, Theo Cavello. You've got uh, Kyle Stuckel. You've got Ben Powers at left tackle. you got uh, Monahan at, uh, at right tackle. Let's see who the right guard is. Brown tried to outrun the pursuit, and he did to a, an extent, but number, number 61, Kevin Viles on the tackle, chasing him from behind, and it's going to bring up about Third and I'll call it three. Garrett Powers is the right guard. Now, I don't know if that's a brother combination. Is that a brother combination, Garrett and? Don, I'm starting to drift out of huh? town here. I don't know too many of the kids in this, <laughs> no at this age now. So I, know, me neither. I, I don't know yeah. who belongs to who. <laughs> There's no other Decinas on this team. No, there? no, no, I'm okay. done. All right. I'm done. Okay. Back to pass, and he throws to Deloya, and he breaks out of two tackles, and then it's a touchdown. Luke Deloya, 23 yards out from Kelleher. That was, that was a great play. You, you know what was great about that play with Luke? Is he, you know, he knew what he was doing with the ball as soon as he caught it, but he looked it into his gut, and he was turning right away. It was an excellent pivot, and then boom. Couple, uh, one move, and then just good, strong running into the end zone. Great play by the Hillers. 23-yard touchdown by DeLoya at 3.43 of the first quarter. Back Luke, yeah. On the kick. Snap, hold, and it is good. All right, that's a great start. You know what, Rick? This, this Hiller team needed it. After those two, uh, two really yeah, demoralizing losses, um, and, you know, football could become a grind. Middle of the season, you're practicing, you lose two tough games. But it's a fun grind, though. Yeah, it's a it's fun. Yeah, winning always helps, no but it's a fun grind. better grind than a football season. But I'll tell you what, it was a uh, – it was a, it, that, that's a big start there because they were losing their confidence a little bit, you know. This team needed to get their swagger back a little bit, and starting like that is excellent. Good to see the cheerleaders up and working here uh, doing the first seven push-ups of the game. Yeah, they haven't done more than seven in the last two weeks, so they, they, yeah. they're out of shape. Yeah, this offense, need, it would be nice to see this offense get going here. All right. Beautiful moon tonight. I mean, you know, it's fun when you walk up to this stadium shaping, uh, look, looking to the west, you know, seeing is the sunset. It, is, is, that a waxing, this sun. is that waxing or waning? I don't look, know. Look at this moon. I can see it right here. It's right in front of us. It's over here where the light. I don't know if that's waning or waxing. Kelly on the kick. And it's going to be taken by uh, somebody. <laughs> Number 13. And he's another good return out to the 40-yard line before he's tackled by Number 20, Tay Scanlon, Ty Scanlon. So number 13, that was uh, Stephen Williams on the on the return. Nice return. He's the quarterback. Yeah, now. I, I was going to say. Return, uh, quarterback. Yeah, he, he's their player. He, he's um, he seems to be their best player. Well, it's interesting they shifted him up because Kelly kicked at that at that spot last time. Probably trying to keep it away from him. So 
So they're in the wishbone. And Williams hands off to number 33. Cameron Junta. And a, a loss, it looks like. Oh, maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm not sure, barely, but Saparoch just slant, uh, jetted in there and um, really made a nice tackle. I don't know if he's run blocking or run blitzing or just reading the plays very quickly, but that's his second tackle for loss. Well, what's odd is, you know, when you're, if you're running straight ahead with the wishbone, this two block is additional to this. So I, I don't – people shouldn't be getting through like that. And look at this. Deloya just crashed through, and, and, and he's with – He's also with uh, Tommy Hamlet on the tackle. That lost about uh, five on the play. Yeah, I mean, it seems this um, they might be intent on trying to run. They lost their starting quarterback. We're not sure how this number 13 can throw the ball. We know he can catch it. Um, has he attempted a pass yet? Or? No, no. Yeah, so we'll see. So I'm guessing the arm isn't quite there to throw, but the, uh, the hands are there to catch. Can't throw it to yourself. And again, it's a handoff, number 33, Junta. And he picks up a good seven yards, so it's going to be fourth and still good eight yards. That was a good run up the middle for, for Medfield. He made a nice little cut back and ran hard. Um, but, you know, at third and 15. What was that, 15? Third and 15, running, yeah, we'll, we'll run it all day. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see if Medfield's got anything else offensively to challenge the Hiller defense. So where so was it? Far, no. Johnny Ham Jones, Lamb Jones, and Jam Jones were all for Texas back in the day? I think so. Uh, uh, it's a line drive kick that Harpenden got to get away from. It was a very strange. It was a late snap and a low kick, and it gets down to the 25 of the Hillers. Well, I was going to say it was... It was SMU, but wasn't that the Pony Express? Oh, that was, that the, was Pony the Pony Express, Pony Craig Express. James and... Uh, but that was also a wishbone, wasn't it? Oh, they all, a lot of Oklahoma ran the wishbone, yeah. with, uh, J.C. Watts and those guys, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think no, I think Texas was the uh, all the Jones brothers. Yes, yes, they were. Uh, I, yeah, Medfield's going to need a little bit more than the wishbone to beat uh, the Hopkins defense tonight, though, I would say. Yeah, I mean, the way it looks, I mean, if you can't pick up a first down with a wishbone, it's going to be a long night. Mm -hmm. And the wishbone is basically predicated on speed. You know, it's, uh, it doesn't look like Hopkinton was surprised by it, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so the, the, the Hillers pick it up with 139 to go in the first at their own 25. And it's a handoff to the lawyer, I think. And he gets close to a first down. He... Yeah, the, 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 it looks again with um, with Zach out. It looks like they are, you know, they need to. They can't give Brown the ball every time, so they're going to give Luke some carries. And Luke will certainly be up for the task. I mean, he's a physical kid. He's a receiver, but he's a, he's a physical kid. He can run the ball. So an I formation behind Keller on the center. A couple of receivers to the right, and it's just a straight up handoff to the. I think the lawyer was the up man, but I'm not sure. It was, yeah, it is DeLoya, and he was short of the first down, so it's going to be third and one still. And this necessarily is not two, two down territory here, Rick. No, um, no. So they're in their own end. Uh, it's certainly makeable. I would say that that's just a couple inches there, a few inches. Yeah, maybe a foot or so. So same formation, the eye. And this time Kelleher, boy, it's close. Nah, he, yeah, he didn't get that. I, I don't know where he is in the pile. Yeah. Oh, oh, this he thing got he got it. it. Okay, all right. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, Bailey, you're right. Bailey got it, right? Yeah, it, it from this angle. But, okay, we'll take it. Yeah. Looks like uh, looks like Ryan's taking some of the dirt out of his helmet there. To yeah, I, I need I need some. Uh, oh, it's just, yep, got to rinse out my eye a little bit. That could be the. Final play of the first quarter. Uh, you would think so. No I don't need know to what rush. The rush is. Yeah, right. All right, so that'll do it at the end of the first quarter with the Hillers up 7 0, and they will pick up a first and 10 at the 35 yard line, heading south when they uh, come back. Don, um, some sad news here in Hopkinton. Bob Lavoie. Passed away yesterday, maybe even the day before. Um, 91 years old. Bob, a long, long time Hoffington 
resident and uh, athlete and grandfather and love yep. to go watch and this and oh and how can we forget uh, his uh, service to the country he's always talking about uh, whenever he has the opportunity talk about the greatest generation ever um, right. in world war ii and all that so uh, you know a, a sad day in hoppington i mean we all know him personally he's a great guy always had a lot of stories and he will be one of those people who will be sorely missed here in hoppington yeah it's, it's uh you know that as that generation you know 91 years old i mean you know, it's, he's, he's lived a heck of a life, and we can all hope that. And he was a great guy, and uh, that was uh, that was the uh, the generation that makes us look like a bunch of wimps. It doesn't right? it? No, it, 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 yeah, I, you know, <laughs> you, uh, you're right. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, you know, he was a, a great man, and it was a, a, you know sad to see him go. So here we go. We got uh, you know Hopkinton. It, it would be nice to get a quick score here again. You know, really put it 14 nothing, alleviate any doubt for this game. Hillers, oh, that looked like movement for the Hillers. No, and he it. rolls right, and he's got Kelly deep behind the, and he caught it, and he breaks loose, and Brendan Kelly is going to have a, I just saw a flag. Uh, that would have been, I, I would have called that defensive interference. I don't know why I, they threw that flag. No, it's way down here. It's at the line of scrimmage, but I don't know what's going on. We got a dead ball uh, against Hopkinton. I think it was a legal man downfield. Is that a legal man downfield? Yeah. Oh, I wish we had a replay. It would be yeah, nice to see. Yeah, see, one of the big linemen there was trying, <laughs> already celebrating before. Uh, that's a sh yeah, that's too bad. You know, there was a few fouls on that, though. <laughs> I mean, there, it looked like Hopkinton was moving. Uh, you know, that could have been called dead, and then the – there was interference down here. They, they didn't call it, but the defensive guy was kind of pushing and grabbing there. But Kelly made a nice job. The perfect pass by Ryan. Yeah, yeah, it was all there. I mean, and then he fought off the tackle, and, and you see that little yellow thing. Oh, oh wait, wait, now what happened? He's picking it up. Okay, so Gerard, I, I don't know what Gerard said to him. But it could have been, hey, that guy was an eligible yeah, receiver did he report? type of thing. Yeah, I don't know. He reported in. I don't know. We're talking about an anticlimactic call. Now, okay, so they're up. <laughs> All right. So we have at uh, at 10.50. At the 10.50 mark, it's Kelly. Well, that it, it must have been a situation where it was a, a guy that was. Or unless he had the wrong number. He thought it was uh, a 73 and it was a 33. Who knows? Okay, but. And Kelly kicking today. It was, did Kelly kick the last one as well? Pat Lukia out today too? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Did Kelly kick that? Kelly just kicked that one. Um, 57. I'm looking for 57. I don't see. Uh, there he is right here. I see oh, him right here. Oh. Um, I don't really know. I mean, I don't think he has done anything to lose his job, uh, at least not during the game. No, he's, I've seen. he's been, he's been <laughs> powering him through. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Um, did I say 75? I meant 57, right? He's number 57. I don't know, but Rick, did I call that a <laughs> quick score thing there or what? I don't know. Did you call so that? Maybe so. I don't know. We're on the same page after all. I don't know. I don't know what we, what we called there. Maybe we are on the same page. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's huge right there. You know, let's take control of this game. I mean, this this team is a good team. It's been a couple tough weeks. Still a lot of football left. Not to mention a revenge game at the end of the year, which we'll get into that later. But <laughs> maybe uh, weeks later. I don't know. I don't know. If we lose twice to Prasinski. Well, I mean, here's well, the God only knows what we'll have to give him. No, but here's 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 yeah, right. Here's the here's the problem. We'll have to send him to Vegas here's, or something. Here's the problem. I don't, I don't know. know. You know, we don't know how this is going to play out, but that game could mean nothing to Ashland. Absolutely, it could not. So it's a short kick. Well, and it's through the hands of number seven, but he gets up the sideline, up to about the forty-two yard line. Number seven, Michael Greitzer. You know, the thing you have to remember about Ashland is they they still have to play Holliston. At Holliston. And that will that will determine the TVL. Right, winner. but I'm talking about the playoffs, though. No, I know. Right, right, yeah, you're right. We'll uh, be in the playoffs the same as, as they will. Well, it depends. It, it, could, it depends who's playing. Because you're playing the playoffs, 
You have three playoff games before. Oh, yeah, you mean because they go down to Division Six. Who knows oh, what I don't know what division. Right. They, yeah, they yeah, could yeah. be going yeah, to the they, state they championship could game. They could and, be. You know, in, in, in whatever division. Yeah. yeah. Four. I think they might be four. Or five, maybe. I don't know what it is. No, they, I think they go down to six. So now they're in the, in the different quarterback, though. Still a big kid, but can you see that number? Number 12? Number 12. So if, uh, so if number 12 is in there, then you got to turn to see where number 13 is on the field. I'm guessing he's out in his wide receiver spot. Yeah. But Ryan Murray took that snap out of the shotgun, the 6'3", 205 senior. And is this 13 closest to us right here? Yeah. So Williams in his natural spot. And now they're coming out of the shotgun. 10-10 to go in the second half, uh, second quarter. And they try to run it up the middle, but no, nothing going. Yeah, they have him out here, number 13, lined up one-on-one -on -one with Ty Scanlon and his out of his linebacker spot. Um. 13's got quite the height advantage, so it'll be interesting to see if that's something that Medfield tries to take advantage of. Yeah, but they get Karen Hur directly over the top here. Look, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us with two guys on him. He's not shading. He's right on top of him. They have an over-under. Oh, yeah. oh, over-under, yeah. and there's a hard rush, and Murray's going to run it up the middle, and he's going to go nowhere. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And I think that's going to be how it's going to go all night for uh, Mr. Williams. So that brings up fourth and about nine. Well, he was described in the uh, media guide as the, um, he would, you know, the, the top receiver in the TVL large, uh, Stephen Williams, number 13, and that moved them in the quarterback the last two weeks. Well, you know, so. you you're, you take one for the Ooh, team. That's you another know, bad snap. Yeah, it was, it's such a long snap that Tommy Hamlet – was able to, I don't even know if he was coming hard to begin with, but he saw how high the snap was. He yeah, just sacked him. That was Scanlon, number 20, that sacked him. But no, yeah, no, it was, it, was, uh, it was Hamlet. I don't think so. It yeah, I got, I got Hamlet on it. You can't see him. I get, I'm going to call him Hambone. I don't think Hambone got that. That was a Hambone. Yeah, no, I, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going number eight. All right. I'm taking Tommy uh, Hamlet on that. Uh, Gerard will tell us. He'll, he'll know on the film. So, But uh, either way, that was another bad snap by them. That's their second bad snap on a punt. Well, it's just that I don't, I don't. They don't have a strong snap. It's just high and, and yeah. slow. You know, not everybody a bad has. Combination. Well, it is a bad combination, but that, I mean, that might be the best he has. Well, then you need to move closer, or just or just or go, just for, go it. for it. <laughs> and that's uh, Brown on the run, running hard and still on his feet. And sometimes that's not a good idea because uh, you get yeah, a chance for eleven guys to hit you. It's not. It's not as to be hopping there when that, when a guy's got your uh, when he's got your leg. That's 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 dangerous. Well, they picked up. Uh, we'll call it two on the play. Make it second and eight. Eight twenty nine to go in the second quarter. Now this is an opportunity to really take control of this game here. Uh, they're at the twenty yard line. Second and eight. And Brown gets a big hole, but it's closed and driven inward. I think he's going to be close to the first down, maybe a yard short. A defensive end did a nice job there, um, shaking off the block and holding his end and, uh, and turning that in and making the tackle on Brown. So that was a, a good play by the midfield defensive end. So we'll call it third and one, pick up of six on the play. And they are right about the 14-yard line. Kelleher with Brown was right. Two wide receivers either side. Here comes DeLoyer into the backfield. And Brown cuts it back into the middle. Looks like he got the first down. Number 33, Junta on the tackle. Yeah, Junta shot in there from it looked like his middle linebacker spot and uh, made a nice tackle. It looked like Brown was – well, he ended up did getting in the first down, but uh, that, was a, that was a nice penetration by Junta. So it brings up first and 10 at the 11. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. 
No need to rush the way this game's going. You should see the ball plenty of times the way the defense is holding stout. Kelleher on the center with the eye behind him. And Brown again straight up the middle, and he's going to make his way to the, we're going to call it the two-yard line. Yeah, Matt kind of delayed there and let his blocks blockers kind of get set up, and uh, then he had a nice burst. I thought he was going to get in. But did he, he give a little uh, Le'Veon Bell there? Did Goof? he kind of? Yeah, that guy. You know, Goof? you love you love him now. Never he's heard coming of him. back, isn't he, or I something? I know who he is. He's, he's dead to you, huh? I don't care who he is. Uh, a little, did he do a little hop skip though before he went into the line? Did isn't he? he a rapper? <laughs> I see what we're doing here. <laughs> Pittsburgh struggling with a few uh, locker room issues. I'm guessing right around now. I don't really know why we're hey, talking about this. Just be thankful and not the Giants, that's all. Yeah. Kelleher with two to each one to each side and Brown just slams it up the middle and drove somebody into the end zone. So I'll call it a, a two yard run for Brown. Yeah, the line did a nice job there. Um, nice drive off the line. Brown just kind of took that in for an easy two yard score. And now we're sitting here, uh, Rick. This is an excellent start. The Hillers could not have asked for a, a better start to kind of shake off the last two weeks. And, um, you know, let's just finish uh, finish strong. Yeah. And Kelly again for the extra. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. We'll have to try to get a beat on that at halftime where Paglialuca is. And that's good as well. Well, let's see. I saw Paglialuca. Uh, he's not running off the field. I don't know. I saw him on the side. Well, he was holding the um, the block at one point. I thought. But uh, we bring it up field to 5:56 oh, to maybe, go. Maybe maybe Kelly's debuting for doing some college kicking. He's playing baseball down in Stonehill, so. Stonehill's kicker, what are they? Uh, I don't know. Oh, he's good, though. Uh, but he's he's probably got another year left at least, but I don't know. Maybe he could be, be a kicker, too, in college. I don't know. We'll find out what's wrong because Pagli Luca has been a very oh, he reliable. Can, he, he's, oh, he's right here, he's right in front of us, 57. Yeah, he, well. can, he, can he can boom him. Hey, he's, been a, he's been a really reliable kicker. But Kelly has, has handled the kickoff and the punts. So no, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And this is going to be picked up by Williams. And he cuts. Now he's coming to the outside. He gets all the way to the outside. Runs into his own man. That was unfortunate. He ran into his own man and wasn't able to get all the way outside. He's tackled at about the 36-yard line of the Warriors. It wasn't a real deep kick, but it was an effective kick. The Hillers had good coverage, and uh, Medfield got what they could out of that, which is pretty good field position. I mean, if they're going to stay in this game and not let this become a route at halftime, they need to put some sort of drive together, even if it's a couple first downs. Yeah, you just can't hand the ball back nah, and, and they make it 28 to nothing. Have they, got, have they gotten a first down yet? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think so. Yeah, they have to They have to do something there. But it's obvious they're under man. They, they haven't really thrown the ball. They've been in the shotgun with the new quarterback, number 12, Ryan Murray, who's come back out, and Mr. Williams has uh, Scanlon and her with him. He's going to look for him. Oh, yeah. And he, you know, uh, we're going to get an interference, but I don't know. Everybody seemed to be going for the ball, but. Yeah, that was uh, that, that was a nice pattern that that the kid ran. It was great coverage and it was a good throw. Uh, you know, that's just a that's a tough call. It looked like it looked like Kieran came up on his back a little bit, but it wasn't. Could have gone either way. You know, twenty-one nothing. They they're trying to maybe give them a a break here and there. So it was a good throw by that quarterback though. I'd run that again if I was them. And maybe stop that and take it. Oh, to, have take it to know, the post. Throw it to somebody who's only got one. I mean, he's Williams is going to have two. These two running with him the whole. Uh, He's or look that way. You got number. You got the, who's the kid on the on the far end there? I can't see the you number. You got Deloya on him. No, Deloya's in the. He's in. Looks like he's in tight. That's Hamlet probably out there with him. Yeah. Oh, oh that's going to be defensive offside. And we're the we're fortunate we're able to see these right on us. We're right on the fifty yard line. 
and it wasn't just one guy. It was, it was well, about three of them coming up the blitz. And yeah, and I think that when, you know there was contact there, which is what blew the blew the play dead. Otherwise, it could have been a free play for midfield. So the two penalties bring it all the way over to the midfield 43-yard line. And Murray hands it off. And doing a lot of east-west, not enough north-south, is number 33, Junta. One thing that they're doing is uh, they're, going on, they're going on two a lot, it looks like. It looks like they're mixing up the... Well, that's one way to the keep the snap count. That's one way to keep the uh, the defense at bay a little bit. They can't tee off and get to you. But when you you see all those people coming into the A gap, you're not running the ball up the middle. You had to bounce it outside. No way to go. And a quick pass, and I can't see who's incomplete. The intended receiver number is that 21. I don't Eric, know, but Eric Ledegar. I'm not sure, but Kelly did a nice job getting some elevation there and making that throw difficult for the quarterback. I mean, I didn't even see where it landed. Did it, it, it hit the guy? Was it close I to the guy? I think he tapped it. I, I thought he hit it. I thought Kelly tapped it. So in the pistol formation, Murray, the quarterback. That's what, we doing. what are we doing here? Okay. Uh, another. No, that, was, that looked like it was movement on. Offensive? Field. Yeah. That's my call from the booth, Rick. There and go. you got it. And there it is. So that'll make it second in about seven, I'll guess. They must have some young kids over there on the sticks because they just keep turning the down marker. <laughs> isn't, there, isn't there a complaint block box somewhere we can put <laughs> complaints in? It was said earlier in the year. There's not, it's not, John Cook's not walking He's through He's not this coming door. through that door. Kim Donahue's not coming through that door. John Ryan is not John walking Ryan through that door. John Ryan is not walking through that door. <laughs> <laughs> and Murray rolls, rolls. He has him deep, but he just couldn't get it there in time. Oh, that's got to be interference. If there was ever interference, uh, I would have thought Scanlon on the interference just had his hands up running into him. Yeah, I'm not sure that was catchable, though. Um, I mean, that, was not, that, that wasn't even close to being completed, so I, that's probably why they didn't throw it. I mean, Scanlon didn't look like he was trying to make a play on the ball. But um, well, he never looked back, and he just ran into him with his he hands. He did not up. look back, no. So that'll bring up fourth and eight, with 4:36 to go in the first half. This and could be. A, I mean, this is a prime situation here for a fake punt. So well, they're not even in punt formation, so I yeah, guess so. Okay. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's got to scramble. Murray's got to scramble, and he's going to the wrong side, and he just throws it away. I, that's a situation where you just throw it. Just, who cares if it gets intercepted? Yeah, or, or just try and run it. Um, it looked like he might have had a little space there. Um, but, yeah, that's a that's a tough scenario for, for Milford. So this game is close to being out of hand here at halftime. That would be Medfield. I'm sorry, Medfield. Um, Hopkinton is up 21 nothing here with four minutes left in great field position. So this could easily go. This could easily go, uh, you know, be a blowout at halftime. You know, we're, I, I'm, I just got blindsided here by Nick Pellucci, hey. former former Hopkinton <laughs> football captain. Hey, hey, Nick, Nick Pellucci's in the booth signing autographs. Doing well. You guys on a bye this week? You Salve Regina football players. We got Kelleher. Ashley Pellucci's the captain of the cheerleaders Throws down there. Throws to number three Salyards who just kind of hitched up and picked up seven <laughs> and we'll call it picked up eight so it's going to be second and eight that's Mr. Hurt so it's uh, <clears throat> second and two and maybe three. Yep, absolutely. Brown to the left of Kelleher. Two to the left. The lawyer in motion. And we're going with that same play, Don. But he th dropped it off underneath the Deloya. Made a nice catch behind him. Gets it down to about the 35-yard line. That was, uh, that was an excellent catch by Luke. I mean, Ryan was kind of rolling out. 
And, uh, and, and Luke kind of came back. It was thrown behind him. An excellent catch turned it up for a nice game. So with 3.28 to go, the Hill is just taking their time, drawing down the clock. So we have uh, Delore in the wing left and two receivers to the left. Looks like Kelly by himself to the right. And a pitch out to Brown. And he's got a lane. No, he's, he's got gone. down the left sideline and he's going to be caught out of bounds by number 21, Eric Lettigar. Yeah, that was excellent blocking along the line. And then I think it was Salyards, number three, who threw a nice block from his wide receiver position to kind of kind of really uh, kind of really um, break Ryan Brown we're kind of working on a, a, a yep it, it's it's yeah, Salyards you, when you see nice the block right, right there yeah you yep. see the seam right there the seam opened up and Salyards turned his man inside we'll take it so the lawyer sets up in the backfield and another handoff to Brown and he's gonna get a touchdown a 12-yard touchdown run by Matt Brown with 2.52. That was, um, I, you know, that was a read option. And if Ryan, you know, that was a touchdown either way because that was wide open. Ryan would have kept that. <laughs> I'm that not even. I'm not even open. sure it was a read option. I think he just gave it to he, him and let him go. I don't know. <laughs> he, 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 either way, it was. Uh, that was an easy touchdown for the Hillers. So, uh, you know, it looks like Medfield might be getting a little demoralized over there. They're hanging there. Their shoulders are getting a little lower, and uh, this is a, this is a great. This is exactly what the Hillers needed out of this game. After oh, two he popped tough that weeks. one up, and it is good. Oh, Kelly with the extra point. Two fifty-two to go in the second quarter, and the Hillers come back upfield, leading twenty-eight to nothing. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, that's a great start for the. For the Hiller. So now you're in a situation, Rick. Um, so this team lost 13 nothing to Westwood, yep. who the Hillers play next week at Westwood. That's correct. So Westwood is two and one in the TVL, three and two overall. It was always tough to tough to play, and you know. Yeah, they've been, been they've been weak. You know, Medfield's been stronger in the last few years, and I know they lost a lot last year. Uh, coming into this year, they had a lot of seniors last year, and it's obvious with you know if they're missing just a couple of key guys you can see what's going on out right. here tonight westwood has been has been down the last two years uh and pretty weak actually and i don't know maybe they've been playing younger guys and they're stronger this year but we're going to find out next week and kelly with the on well not an onside kick i don't think a squib a type of deal. squibber down to the 30 yard line Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. That was so kind of a strange, I, I, I don't know, it, was, it wasn't really a squibber. It looked almost like he was trying to do an onside kick the way it was bouncing and it just didn't kick up. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. It, it didn't look like the, the the line for Hopkinton was looking to recover that. That was just kind of a... Yeah, maybe he just missed it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but okay, so here we go. We'll see if Medfield wants to even attempt to try and string some passes together here. Well, I'm sure they do. I mean, the they're, they're still trying to be competitive anyway, right? Well, I mean, you yeah. want you want to get a few first downs. But yeah, but they might be better off still running it. That still might oh. be the only way to do it for them. So Murray's at quarterback, and he hands off yeah, see. to, I'm guessing it's the workhorse, Junta. Kelly again on the tackle on the, on the right end. Yeah, I mean, the Hiller defensive line, you got Doherty, uh, Tyler Doherty at nose, number 26. You got Ben Powers, 74. You got Kyle Stuckel, uh, number 55. They weren't pushed back at all, and, uh, you know, running back kind of tried to bounce that outside, and the Hillers were ready for it, so. Hey, do you see the little signs? That, you haven't seen this in the high school level yet. Do you see the little signs they're holding up on the far sideline? Oh, yeah, as far as, like, that, that gives them, little, like, what the little, formation Little pictures, whatever. yeah, formation. Yeah, it's and, holding. And there's a, a catch by by two Williams, and it looks like he's going to get the first down. I'm, I'm watching the official come over, and what do we got? I would have given, yeah, there he is, first down. Is it a first down? Yeah. It's a first down. 
So Is Williams it? catches one over the middle. Probably a better pass than trying to go downfield. That was a nice throw and catch. He threw it kind of where he was the only person that could grab that, and he did grab it, hauled it down, was hit immediately, but uh, was able to get the first down. Yeah, exception of Brown, uh, our linebacker is relatively short, so he should be able to do some damage inside. I thought you didn't like to use the word short, Rick. It's all perspective, height John. Challenge. I thought you always, uh, it's all, it's all, uh, you always make me say height challenge. Uh, it's all... No, most people refer to me as mentally challenged, not uh, not height challenged, but that's okay. That's all right. It's okay. All right, well, that was a good negative play again by the defense. You know, again, I, you know, I reference this, Rick. You're down 28-0, 28 and your best play is a dive left. I don't know. Yeah, when you're down, that's not such a good thing, unless Hopkinton has the play. But, uh, oh, the ball. Uh, Murray's in the shotgun, second and we'll call it 10. Is he, oh, it looks like he's trying to set up a screen. And he's got to get this loose. He's got to get rid of it, and he just throws it out of bounds. Hamlet comes crashing through the hopping inside line on the coverage. Yeah, there was nothing going to go on there. Um, that kid came all the way across the field. Hamlet started on the uh, on the far side. And he stayed in his back pocket the whole way. Now, Hamlet's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with him because you got 13 over here with with her and, uh, and Scanlon doubling them. So, you know, he's going to follow them all over the field which he did effectively there. Yeah, they're in a double tight end feature too, so there's only really two receivers in the pattern. And he's going to go deep to 13, and he's – nice catch. Wow, all the way down to the 22-yard, 23-yard line of the Hillers. Nice catch by Williams and a good throw by Murray. Yeah, it was a good throw. Um, it was a nice pattern, just kind of like a deep post there. Um, he got over top in between of Scanlon and her, and um, the quarterback threw it high. He it obviously looks like he's got good hands here. Yeah. So uh, hauled that in, and now Medfield's in business. Well, Medfield calls timeout with 55 seconds to go in the in the half. Um, you know, as you set set him up at the we'll call it the 23 yard line. Uh, you know, Medfield only has two. They have two tight ends and then two wide receivers with the running back. It's a little old school. And the wishbone, too. I mean, yeah. they said that they had two, you know, two running backs that could run the ball. Um, well, so far we've seen Junta, number 33. And I'll, I'll guess it's uh, 21 Lenegar is maybe the other running back. Yeah, and again, with, uh, with, the, um, with, the, with the backup quarterback playing, you know, they're, they're – they're not going to throw the ball a lot, but when they do, obviously, they're going to go to number uh, 13. Well, Murray's a senior, so he's been around the program a while. Can certainly get it done. No, well, he looks like he's their third option, though. All right, they're in the pistol, and he fakes handoff, and he's going to throw it up into the corner of the end zone and just out of the reach of Williams, who would beat it would beat the double coverage, actually. It's just they couldn't get the ball to him. Yeah, it, he, he ran a nice route. It looked like he was going to break in, but he broke out. Uh, he was open, and uh, it was just, just a poor throw. So that brings up second and 10 from the 23, 24-yard line. Junta, the running back behind Murray, he's going to throw. He's got dancy feet. He's going to get outside the pocket, and he just dumps it off to, I think that's Junta, and he's taken out of bounds. I can't see who made the tackle way over there. Yeah, they had good penetration right off the start, and I, I actually thought it was uh, i thought it was a screen pass. I don't know if the line just kind of broke down. Um, I think he's got jittery feet, and he likes to get deep, you know, and he, he had something. because there's no screen going on. He had something. All right, so that brings up – he was he was out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. We'll call it third and five. And Murray's going to – as a – in and out, and it was supposed to be to Williams, incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down with 36 seconds to go. Yeah, it looked like uh, uh, number 30. Um, 
Oh, we, do we have a number 30? Well, our number 30? Or no, it was number 20. Is it Scanlon? Scanlon. Out there oh, with, okay. yeah, he was, uh, he's, he's running up, with him? Yeah, he's the up man. He tried to get an in and out, and he was late on the break, and the ball was too far out in front. So it's fourth, a big play for Medfield. Fourth and we'll call it five. And a big blitz, big blitz, and he's got to get rid of it, and he can't. I would just just throw it up. It's fourth down. Just throw it up. Who cares if it gets picked? Yeah, I'm not really sure, but this is a <laughs> I don't I don't like to point out when kids do you know bad things because they're kids, but I guess I can talk about the midfield. That, that that fullback has looked on two straight plays. He's got no interest in, in picking up that blitzing <laughs> linebacker. That's the second time he's decided like, okay, go ahead. So. Uh, well, it could have been one of those, which one do I get kind of. It, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. Because there were two guys, Chase and Murray. He kind of just he doesn't show much interest in trying to make the block. I'll take the rock, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so 28 seconds to go, and the turnover of downs. Hill is take over at the, I thought it was the 18 yard. How did it get out to the 26? Now make sure you stay tuned. Oh, he lost. Time he lost the, yards. He lost hop, yards for the, the Hopkinton uh, rolled. Hopkinton cheerleaders coming up at halftime. Oh, and Deloya runs into Kelleher, and I, I don't think he got much. Maybe five, uh, maybe three. He did a good job by staying in bounds there. But stay tuned for the cheerleaders. So, so we're gonna have. Uh, looks like the Hill is gonna let the clock run out. Five seconds to go, for, and for, they're going to let it run out. For those watching, go ahead. I'm done. For those watching on YouTube, we're going to keep the feed going. You're going to have the band at halftime. You're going to have the Medfield cheerleaders, and you're going to have the Hopkinton cheerleaders led by Ashley Pellucci. And uh, just stay tuned, and we will be back afterwards. There you go. Thank you.
Okay, Hiller fans, we're getting ready for the second half as the Hillers come on to the, the field. Before we get going, I want to thank uh, all the people who do all the hard work here. We got Denise and Taki on camera with Tom Diggs and Samantha Diggs also on camera. And Mr. Everything over there, Mike Terosian, uh directing everybody. And uh, looks like a well-oiled well orchestra here. Right, right, Don? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's do some recapping here. 3.43 of the first quarter. DeLoyer from Kelleher, 23-yard pass, 7-0. In the second, at 10.50, Kelly to... Uh, Kelly from Kelleher, 65 yards, 14 to nothing. And then two Matt Brown runs, a two-yarder and a 12-yarder, bring us to 28 to nothing where the Hillers will start the second half. You know, now we're going to be in a situation, Rick, I could see Hopkinton trying to – who gets the ball? Do we get the ball here or are we kicking? Uh, I believe we get the ball. Medfield got the ball to start with a, an exceptional kickoff. Okay, so the Hillers are going to want to take the ball and go right down and kind of put a – a 35 number up on the board, and then it'll be a situation of just trying to play out the game, stay healthy, you know, stay sharp, and uh, perhaps give some other kids uh, a chance to get in there. Yeah, you know, I haven't been to, you know, to just a couple of home games, haven't been any of the away games, but it really hasn't been an opportunity to get in your second level players, and uh, maybe the tonight's that night where you get to see a few of the guys that you might see next year. Yeah, I mean, if you're you know a JV parent or if you're a JV player, now this is this is what you want because it's a it's really a good situation to get in. It's a lot of times if you're if you're on the losing situation, getting blown out, it's not as fun. But if you're doing the blowing out and uh, you know you get in there as a JV kid, good for you. Have fun with it. It looks like uh, Medfield is that number eighty. I can't see for Medfield. Eighty-seven. Maybe? Eighty-seven. Yeah, Cameron Lund kicks it off to. Is that the, uh, no, it's Matt Brown, right straight up the middle, brings it out to about the 40-yard line where he's tackled by number seven, Michael Geitzer, I think. They set up uh, some nice blocks there. Matt fielded it pretty cleanly and took it up for a nice 15-yard game to give the Hillers good field position. You know, other than, I mean, I can count two plays that Medfield made in that first half. It was that initial kick return. Yep. They had a good return. And then that long pass there to number 13. Yeah, they had a couple of passes to 13, but the, the kick return certainly sticks out as the, as the opening. And then they went backwards from there. Uh, they haven't had a lot of offense. A couple of penalties pushed them over with their first first down uh, in the first quarter. But other than that, not much. So Kelleher... Just hands off to DeLoya, and there's nothing doing there. He cuts back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Brings up second and ten. Yeah, DeLoya motions in and then come, becomes a running back there, and uh, he kind of got that. Medfield played it pretty pretty tough with their front, uh, front five, and uh, Luke really had nowhere to run. So it's like the – almost like the – the split backfield, the old days when the quarterback was under center, now this quarterback's just, just in front of the running backs, and it's a deeper handoff. And now it's just going to be a run out to the left by Brown. He's got a lot of room, and he gets down the sideline. He's pushed out of bounds by number three, James Wilder. You know, they put the, uh, yeah, the, that year, was the year of graduation on here, and I, I, got, I got to do the math here. 2021 would be a sophomore. Jeez, you, mean, <laughs> you mean they're not giving yeah. us the. No, they give me the year of graduation. Oh, my at, goodness. You know, Come on. Now, uh, see, that, that, I don't get paid enough money, Mike. I want better rosters, yeah, all right? See, I, I, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, good thing I'm not paying attention to that. Mike will be right on that. Good. Okay, so Kelleher in the shotgun, three receivers to the right. And it's just the number 34, it's Drew Saparocious. Yeah, who plays primarily defense, um, but he is, you know, he runs some running back there too. So he had a nice hard run to get things started here. Yeah, picked up a down. six yards on the carry, makes it second and four from the 35-yard line. Almost nine minutes to go in the third quarter. I would expect a good dose of some uh, some running the ball by the uh, by the Hillers here, kind of chew up some clock, get this game over with. Well, I mean, you're in complete control of this game. There's no real 
you know, you'll need to do these kinds of things. And it's just Deloya straight up the gut, and he picks just short of the first down. Will be third and one. Yeah, again, I mean, that's that's at least five or six carries out of that spot for Luke. Um, the line's doing a nice job. They seem to be controlling um, Medfield's defensive line. You know, again, you got third and one here, I and mean, you're just taking your time. Here comes uh, Brown back in, number 24. Well, it's a... It's a one-yard gain. You, you kind of guess you know who it's going to, right, if you're playing that game. I'd be surprised if Hopkinton threw the ball much. And it's the eye formation behind Kelleher, and it's the up back, and it's going to be close. I don't know if uh, DeLoya got it. What do we see? There wasn't much push by the offensive line, but there wasn't a lot of yardage to get there. Yeah. So Luke seems to think he's got it. Sure. Okay, and I think he's right. All right, they just gave it to him. So we'll give him one on the carry, just enough to get the first down. We're at the 30-yard line. Heading in at 7.33 to go in the third quarter. Looks like we're lo losing the uh, moon a little bit. Is that clouds getting in front of it over there? Some clouds? It could be. That's dropped quite a bit in the sky, though. And just a straight hand off the brown, and they got his feet. He's just got to blow the whistle yeah, sooner no than that kidding. in my mind. And he was going nowhere, and a bunch of white was coming at him. Yeah, Brown, you know, he's a tough runner. He's not going to go down with one kid, and that's about the third time we've seen him kind of. You know, just have somebody has his ankle and he's hopping around there. Just blow the whistle. So, no gain on the play. The clock's going at the 6.45 mark. The Hillers will be traveling to Westwood next week. Who's really not a playoff factor at this point either. As Brown comes to the left, got a lot of room, a little shake and bake. He gets to the sideline, puts on the hit. And as it, number 66 cleans up on the tackle. And I, I don't have a 66, so going to have some help here, Don. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he cleaned up, but he cleaned up, you know, 20 yards downfield. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean it, 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 not only that, but it's the only number I saw going by. And I don't see a 66 on the roster. Maybe a 68? The lawyer made a nice, uh, nice block there. I thought they were going to throw a flag on him. It looked like he got his hand up a little bit, but he ended up uh, kind of hooking that guy. It wasn't called. And uh, that was a nice uh, nice run there by Brown. So he gets it all the way down to the 11-yard line where it's first and 10. And they're in that split backfield. And it's Brown, and he cuts it up the middle. And down about the five-yard line maybe. That's some good hard running between the tackle running by Ryan or Matt. It's Matt Brown. Yeah, Matt yeah. Brown. Yep. Second three for the Hillers from the four yard line. You know, Medfield looks like they have some size along the line. It was uh, it was mentioned in the um, in the media guy that they had two good defensive ends. It doesn't look like they have a lot of 2019 graduation dates on here. So what does that make them? Maybe Juniors, the future. Seniors. Yeah, sophomores. that would be seniors, 219. Brown to the outside. He's pursued, but there were a lot of Medfield guys here, and I'm not sure one of them touched them. I think they were looking for the flag. <laughs> I think they were trying to get, they thought it was flag football <laughs> for a second because they were all just standing there. They didn't look like they wanted to tackle, and Ryan just planted his foot and cut it up, and that was an easy touchdown. Well, so in the third, at 4.55 to go in the third quarter, another Matt Brown touchdown. And that's from five yards out. Well, six yards out, what it might have been. And Saparosha's late on the field, always gets the coach's attention <laughs> when you're the last guy to get out oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Kelly with the kick, and that's going to make it 35 to nothing. And with 4.55, the Hillers come up field for the kickoff, leading this game 35 to nothing. 
Yeah, it, you know, it's it's funny when when you play Medfield, it, it's normally um, a close game. In fact, I, you know, reading some of these scores from the Jim Gerard era, 13-7 back in 2010, 28-25, 21-14, 15-14. Medfield beat us here, 29 to seven in 2014. It was ugly. Actually, that could have been over it, there. It was over there, right? Yeah, it was you're right. 21-8. And uh, it uh, it um, you know it's usually a close game, so it happens from it happens from time to time, right? You don't you, you can't recruit. You get what you get, and you gotta you gotta deal with it, right? And yeah. you know I, I, I know in, in the hockey program at Hopkinton for years, kids would go to different schools. They wouldn't go to Hopkinton, and you lose some decent athletes that could play the sport. You know, who knows if that's going on at Medfield? But it all cycles through. And this is Williams on the carry, getting to the outside. Now it reverses direction, but can't get going as number, is that Brown? I see a four. 34, Saparosius 34, on the tackle. Saparosius, which they usually do play a lot of starters on their on their kickoff team. But that's interesting. Was number 13 back there returning kicks before? Yes, he's oh, been he? down okay. there with, okay. uh, with number seven, Geitzer, to receive the kicks. I mean, if he's, if he's your guy, why not? Put him back there, let him run the ball. The more times you get the ball in his hands, the better. Looks like the sun, uh, the, uh, the moon's coming out a little bit brighter. That's because it's Sweet Caroline. It's all about the Red Sox in the playoffs. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a fun series uh, with the Astros. I think so, but the kids out here are having a blast with Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Place is rocking with a big win going on, 35 to nothing. Well, this has been nice because, you know, it's been spirit week over at the high school, which this is homecoming, so they had their big pep rally today and the whole 10 yards. So, you know, it's been a fun week for the kids. And, um, and again, this is just kind of a cherry Col on the top. Coleman with, a, nice with a, a football win, big yeah. blowout. Yeah. Murray back to pass. And he had somebody, number three, across the middle. Nice catch. That's James Wilder. He just, uh, they had crisscrossing routes where they broke in, broke out. And uh, just a nice quick pass for a first down. Matt Bennett in town here, uh, former Hopkinton resident. Uh, looks like he's up here signing autographs up from Atlanta, taking in the homecoming game. Had three, uh, three boys uh, that were in the youth sports system. We unfortunately lost them to Atlanta uh, before they got into high school, but great family. Uh, I don't know if I recall them. Uh, uh, yeah, they oh, were picked up by Saparosius. And he gets loose. And he returns it to about the 22-yard line. He was looking, Murray was looking for number three. Wilder over the middle, and it was just picked off. Nice pickoff by Saparosius. Yeah, they uh, they had nice pressure there, mm -hmm. and uh, Saparosius was just kind of sitting there. It was thrown right in his gut. Made a nice play, took it up. And uh, this is this is getting kind of ugly here, and um, this could be four, uh, 42 nothing here. Let me score. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're still talking to Kelleher, so I don't know. Uh, number twenty-seven checking into the ball game at uh, at running back Cam Mulvaney. Yeah, he he was a sophomore. He played uh, he played last uh, last week a little bit. No, the Bennett's, uh, their oldest, Connor Bennett, was my oldest son. So he Jake. was yeah, Jake's age. So, you know, he played, played baseball when they were young, and they moved out uh, probably before they got into high school. But nice, very nice family. All right, so we get Kelleher to the pitch, too. Mulvaney, and he cuts it to the right, and it's going to be flagged. It's going to come back. Cam Mulvaney. A little dipsy do on his way. That'll, yeah. that'll come back. Yeah, Mulvaney got some carries last week in Holliston towards the end of the game. He uh, he's not a big kid, but he looked kind of shifty last week. Um, and I think he's only a sophomore. Yeah, I think he is. Uh, so we'll he's a sophomore. So we'll see. Uh, we'll, yeah, I'm sure we'll see him a little bit more as the season progresses, and certainly uh, into next year. And I would suspect, you know, you'll keep seeing. This looks like a pretty significant penalty. What was this? Uh, could have been a block in the back, maybe. It was over as he turned the corner. 
We got a lot of a lot of. That's fifty. Is that fifteen yards? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of clean um, uniforms coming in now. At three forty-five to go in the third quarter, we have Kelleher getting the play coming back, and it's first and twenty-five. Well, you know, this is when you you know when you're a sophomore, or a junior, or even a senior that doesn't get playing time. This is when you want to stand next to the coach. <laughs> yeah, you want to be right next to him with so your helmet. He with your helmet on. Oh, you better have your helmet on. <laughs> with your helmet on. And I'm guessing this is Mulvaney. You just took it to the left. So what do we have here? Yes, Mulvaney picks up about, eh, we'll call it five and a four and a four or five in the play. We'll maybe okay. four, we'll call it second and 21, 22. Looks like Kelleher just. Uh, is this 11 coming in at quarterback? Yeah, Patrick Brenton. That is Patrick Brenton, the junior. Yeah, it looks like Kelleher just kind of tapped out there. All right, and you know what? The formation is probably irrelevant. It's going to be just a lot of runs to Mulvaney's. He goes straight up the middle for about two. And the host of midfield tacklers. That's going to bring up third, and yeah, we'll call it 20. So 224. So Don, we don't know. I'm guessing the outcome of the Westwood game has an impact whether we're in the playoffs or not. Well, that's what I was actually just trying to trying to pull up. I I think that I think that we would have to win that game because that'll get us above 500. Well, I've, we've seen we've seen it's going to be a pass by Brenton and he's going to get sacked and he's going to lose about five on the play. Uh, so I'll bring up fourth and a ton. Um, I have seen below 500 teams in the playoffs in the past, and the fact that we lost to a Division One team may have an impact on that. I, I, I really, yeah, I, I'm really not sure about how any of the tiebreakers or any of that works, but um, I, I would think that if they beat Westwood, uh, that would bring the record to four and three. Four and three. Now we're making a big assumption we're going to win tonight. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, you, you should be out in Vegas, Rick, with that kind of that kind What of kind of odds up. can I get, huh? I, I feel it. Um, I'm trying to – I thought we had the standings here. So the clock's just running down. We're going to get a timeout by Hopkinton. Yeah, they're number um, – well, they're number four in the uh, Boston Herald, the D4 South rankings. Uh, I know Milton's yeah, but that's, in but there. It's, but it's yeah, the MIAAs, right? The, right. The, the ranking. That's just. Um, so I would, I, you know, just without knowing, I'll just sit here and talk because we got a thirty-five nothing lead here. But I, I would think that, say, the Hillers win this week, they win next week, that would set them up for a playoff game, likely away, likely away. Right. It, I, I could see them going in as like a number four seed, playing the number one seed, which I think right now is Milton. Who's really, you know, I mean, we beat we, them here last year. We played them here last year. That was, a, that was a team that they couldn't pass. Was that the team that just ran? Dartmouth and. Nobody could pass last year. Dartmouth against. and. I remember just watching the game going, you're yeah, kidding no, me. Just, they didn't. They, uh, yeah, neither one of the teams they played last year, they could really pass. So Kelly and booms it, and it looks like it's going to get the end zone. So they'll come out to the 20 yard line. And the, the midfield will take over at the. At the 20, first and 10, with 101 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, yeah. so that would that would be my guess, and then, you know, then they win that. You know, if they win that, then they would play the winner of the two-three game. You know, I, I I don't know. I just can't worry. About I don't that even know. I don't stuff. even know how many teams you get. Four teams from the south, four from the I north. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Yes, yeah, the top four, and that's where you get into a situation that if you've got a a bad division and there's teams there that are under that are you know under 500 volleyball's up three nothing oh they won three nothing oh, they're three up. straight sets no they, they won they're, three they're up they won three nothing that's pretty good it's okay murray in the shotgun and he throws it out to williams who just taps his toes gets out of bounds and it's probably just Beyond the first down? 
I yeah. think it's just beyond a 32-yard line, maybe. This Steven, uh, this Steven Williams looks like a pretty accomplished receiver. 27-yard oh, I mean, line, I'm sorry. He's a sharp a sharp root runner. He, um, he's he got good hands. He, you could tell that he knows how to catch the ball. So. Well, they got him listed as 6'3", 195, which makes him probably 6-ish, 185. He looks tall, he, he looks tall out one. there. I don't know what that was, but he, he looks tall out there. Um, I don't know if he's 6'3". It's hard to see here, but he's one of the taller kids out there. Um, well, the quarterback's 6'3", and he that doesn't look as tall as the quarterback, Murray. Hmm. But, boy, how would you like to be the wide receiver <laughs> coming into your senior year and you lose your quarterback? Yeah. That, that doesn't feel too good, I, I bet, nah. I can imagine. So, so the penalty brings it back. Especially if you're trying to get noticed and if you want to play at the next level. Second and eight. Oh, oh he's, gonna, he's getting out of trouble, and he's going to get sacked. Oh, and the ball's down. The ball's down. And Medfield looks like they have it. Yeah, I thought that was blown dead. Yeah, it seemed dead. like it was blown dead, did it? Uh, the quarterback struggling to get up. Yeah, you had Tyler Doherty in there. You had uh, number 28, uh, Eric Davis. I don't is, – is Tyler Doherty still in? Is he yeah, in the nose guy? I, I saw 25 so. in there. Yeah, that's – Oh, uh, I see 20. Yeah, I see 26. And then 28, um, Eric Davis. He's not a big kid. I don't know. He got him in there. Iso on him, see if he could fire off the ball. And he's got to throw it's it deep. Active. And it's just a, a wobbler. It gets through the hands. And it's funny. He's got most of his, uh, his rotating guys up front, but the ones are still hanging out in the back. Yeah, well, normally it's when you get to the 40s. You know, 40, you know, 35, <laughs> still keep them. Yeah, I don't know. Still Everybody else is starters. rotated out. I guess maybe you want the shutout. You know they're going to run. I mean, you know they're going to pass the ball. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'm sure we'll see kids as they as they go in here get a whole quarter. It's end of the third quarter. Is Hall, uh, Hopkinton is up 35 to nothing. And Matt Brown with three rushing touchdowns today. Kelleher with a couple of passes. And it's just been total domination by the Hillers, both offensively and defensively. Hillers are, are being led by Jim Gerard, who's in his ninth year as the uh, head coach of the Hillers. Assistant coach Dan Sullivan, who's been with them the whole time, is the offensive coordinator. Dave Swanton, who's the assistant head coach and uh, offensive line coach. Then you have Dan McLean, who is the um, defensive coordinator, former head coach of Bellingham, and now been with the Hillers here for a few years. You got Mark Sanborn. He's a, a Hopkinton uh, alum and a former football and baseball star. He uh, He's one of the assistant coaches. And not a bad kick out of the end zone is DeLoyer. Receives it at the 45, does a little dipsy do and gets to about the 43, maybe the 42. That was an interesting uh, kick out of the end zone. That was the Hillers take over. Interesting kick, and then Luke kind of he jumped up jumped to get it. For it. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do there, but he, you know, he looked good doing it, <laughs> and uh, and he returned it, and uh, you know he got the Hillers in pretty good field position here. It kind of looks like the move that uh, his father makes sometimes. Ah, uh, oh, dancing up a storm, Walking that kind of thing, with legs up and the oh, arms oh, over. Oh, and oh, I'm not sure. All right. So Brenton, Brenton's still at quarterback. Oh, uh, no, he's, no. Number 11 just went out to the, who's at quarterback? Can you see a number? Uh, no. Not from is this it, angle. Is it Bernardin, maybe? It's Bernardin, and he gets to the outside, and we're going to flag on the play, and I'm guessing there's a hold. It was thrown in that vicinity. Yeah, okay. So both so both Brenton and, and Bernardin are juniors, so one of them are going to take over the range next year. I'm, well, can we make that assumption? Um, yeah, I mean, unless they can get Keller back here on a red shirt, <laughs> I'm not sure that they can do that. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, uh -uh. I guess, huh? No, not in high school, it doesn't. <laughs> but this is, yeah, it's number 10. Yeah, number 10. Speaking of possible red shirts, I saw Hayden Pereira just before the game. Unfortunately, he broke his leg again. Here? 
You saw Hayden I saw him here, here ah. at the game. Unfortunately, he broke his leg again. This is the same at one. Salve Regina. Yes, he had a, a, a plate put into his leg, and uh, it broke at the plate, so they had to put in a bigger plate. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, your senior year, that's tough. Mulvaney was supposed to go inside, bounced outside, and another flag on the play. and Could be another hold, and it is another hold. Yeah, and by Hopkinton. it looks like they've got the uh, the second line in here, and you know these kids don't get it together here. They're going to become <laughs> the third line before you know it. Um, I don't know who these holding penalties are going on, but that's not going to make the coaches happy. I mean, it's a blowout, but again, you're just trying to get better. You know, all you're trying to do is stay sharp, get better, and now you're out here. You got to make your mark, and uh, and holding is not the way to do it. No, and I and I'm not. I'm not calling out anybody specifically, but I can see number 71, Aiden Morin, is in the game now. It, it looks like right tackle. Mm -hmm. and I, I think I see 54, Luke McDonald, the junior, in there somewhere. Yeah, we'll try and get a beat on the um, – looks like Bernardin's out here. Or no, no, this is Brenton uh, out here. Brenton's at the quarterback. No, 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 Brenton's out here at receiver. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Brenton's out here. And Mulvaney straight up the middle. So I see 66, uh, David Kiones. I see uh, you had already mentioned number 71, Aiden Morin. Yeah, 54, I saw him already. Yeah, 54 is Luke McDonald. And you got Brenton out here as a receiver. You got Bernard you got the Brian, quarterback. Brian Keefe in the slot. Brenton calls signals, and he's gonna throw it, and it's a quick it was knocked in the air, but it looks like number, uh, I'll give the tip to number 81, Elliot Mance on the end, who just tipped the ball on the way out. Yeah, Brian Keefe, a uh, sophomore, um, looked like he was a slot receiver there, just kind of ran a quick curl. He was open, but the defensive end did a nice job jumping up and uh, knocking that down. You got uh, number 22 here from Medfield, Sam Jolin, and... He's wearing a cast, it looks like, on his hand. And it looks like yeah, Bernard gets nowhere. Got roughed up a little bit at the line of scrimmage as he tried to get out to the left, and he's dropped. It'll bring up fourth and a long, long way to go. So with 9.41 to go, the Hillers will... It looks like... Kelly's back to punt. It's, it's fourth and 20-something here. Well, that was a bad punt. That turned out to be a good punt. <laughs> that rolled a long way down to the, about the 24-yard line where the Hillers will take over first and 10. Yeah, it looked like it, it kind of just... I'm sorry, the Warriors will take over first and 10. Kind of shanked off of Brendan's foot there, but, you know, he's got a powerful leg, so it ended up getting a good bounce, and, and the yardage ended up there. So we've got a, you know, the way this game is played out, and they've got a little things to talk about maybe when they get into the film on uh, Monday. Not necessarily to the one the one team, but certain some things to talk about. There's always something to learn on the football field, um, you know, especially in the film room. There's, uh, there's, there's always ways to, to be getting better. Number 40, Christian McDonald making his way out to the end position. Replacing number 56, Lucas Monahan. So we got Tommy Hambone Hamlet out here to the far right on coverage. I'm going to stick with the Hambone. All right. I like it. And as a complete pass. No, knocked out of the hands by DeLoyer as number 21, Eric Lettigar. Thought he had it for a second, and DeLoyer separated them from the ball. So just to get through the rest of the coaches for the uh, Hillers, I mentioned Coach Sanborn, who's the special teams coordinator, and he's uh, upstairs on the, um, you know, doing doing the uh, do, doing the camera work. Cam well, not the camera, film. but he's the film. Yeah, film he's, guy. Well, he's the, he's the guy talking to Coach Gerard. Oh, 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 he's the, yeah, okay. He's coaching up there, not doing a. No, he's off coaching. The hands. Murray tried to get uh, Williams and he missed him. 
And you got Brandon Anderson, who's the defensive backs and wide receivers. You've got Coach Dave Hughes, who the oh, stadium the, the, is the named legend. after. Uh, who coaches the uh, freshmen. You got Will Collins, who assists uh, Coach Hughes. Mike Webb, who uh, coaches the middle school program, which is an awesome program. Now first year for the Hillers to be doing that. Middle school, which you can see on HKM. So uh, I, I got one thing to comment on that. Uh, coach Hughes, a long-time coach. Oh, yeah. Um, probably been married a long time. You think this is one of those things where his wife said, you need something to do, get out of the house? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. Although I think I think Hughes golf, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he can only golf so many rounds. I'm not sure. Because I, I can see that happening to me. I don't know. Carl, I, Carl I can see Moore. my wife at one point saying, get out. <laughs> Carl Morningstar has tried to get me back on the sidelines, and I don't know. I'm, is, I'm is retired. The, um, I'm retired. At the Pup 1 level? Yeah. How are we doing there with numbers? Are we, uh, are we doing okay? I'm actually not sure, but I, I think I think. Well, he needs to okay. gap eight back, right? you got to get I that could, gap I, eight going. I could get that going in a heartbeat. The Medfield punts, and it looks like Deloy is going to take it at the around the 45-yard line of the Hillers, where the Hillers will take over first and 10. Then you 48 to go in the fourth quarter. Then you round it out with Ed Flannery, who assists on the middle school, and Ken Gates, who's also a middle school coach. And new to the staff is former quarterback Hank Rudden, who uh, has been a volunteer coach. Yeah, but I don't. I see it there, but where is it here? I don't think they've adjusted that yet. But yeah, no, Coach uh, Coach Rudden is down there. He works, I believe, with the wide receivers. Where um, is he? I don't see him. He's down there with the long hair. I don't know. They're with the white hat? Well, he's right. Is he yeah. wearing a white hat? He's got a white hat and long hair. Jeez, yeah. Hank. Wow. Coach Charles got to get the yeah, implement the New York Yankee uh, uh, haircut. We got to get something going here. <laughs> I don't know. Mulvaney wide left, and he's got the corner, and he's up the sideline. Picks up. It looks like about 12 on the play, maybe 13. Yeah, but Coach uh, Coach Rudden also coached AAU baseball over in Metro West uh, this past year. So, uh, you know, he's great with kids, and he's very knowledgeable. So it's a, he's a welcome addition to the staff. Yeah, he graduated with the year oldest yep, son, yep, right? Yep, yep, 2012. No, 2012 uh, 12 season. season 13. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say my son graduated in 2012. Yeah, yeah. Who, well, we'll talk about Michael here in a second because I don't know his – what did Ryan need? Ryan Kelleher tonight was going to um, break Michael's – it's closing in on uh, the only passing record that Kelleher does not hold, uh, which is the career career passing yards. He's 57 yards oh, shy. He's got, it. He's oh, got he's that. Got it. He's got yeah, he's through that one pass. Bounce. Right, right. So Ryan is now yeah, good the, for him. Ryan is now. I mean, records are made to be broken, and Ryan has had a, a great two-year stretch here with the Hillers, throwing a lot of balls. And, uh, you know, to – to uh, pass more yardage than uh, Decina and uh, and the Doyle, that's quite an accomplishment. So good for Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you love to see it, and it's and it's funny. Though. I mean, you know, you look back over the years, and there's this since we've been involved, this has been pretty good quarterbacks here. Yeah, and um, the game has changed enough that y you know what. They throw a lot now. Well, the thing is, you got to remember, like, you know, Michael played. He played three years. And then you had Hank. Hank was very effective, but he only played a year because he was sitting behind right, Tessina. Right, right. And then, and then you had Adam. Patrick, uh, oh, Patrick Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. kind of came in here. And, and then he had a year. And then he had two years. No, nah, Patrick only. Yeah, he had like one. Junior, junior yeah, he did. Oh, that's yeah. right. And then he started splitting time with Kelleher. With Kelleher. Then the older Kelleher came in, and he had about a year and a half. So, you know, you, you, a lot of these kids are sitting behind good quarterbacks. Yeah, and yeah. You got to take advantage when you, di you know, when you get in there. And obviously, Ryan has. So, it'll be interesting to see these two new quarterbacks that are debuting here and Bernardin and, uh, and Brenton, and we'll see how they develop as QBs. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Sometimes it's the luck of the draw who you come in behind, who's yeah. there, who's doing what. And, but, as you, you know, as you said, for the last nine years since Gerard's been here, he's – he hasn't been, you know, wanting in that position. No, no, it's been one of the team strengths. So it's uh, six fifteen to go in the fourth. It's thirty-five to nothing. The Hillers, uh, as they're just trying to close out this game. I see number four, Max Lakasha, out here in the. What are we going to call that, a, a tight bunch situation? You got a lot of guys right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'll say. I, I and think that it's works. a fake pitch. Uh, uh, and it looks like it's coming back as 
Bernardin gets to the outside, but I saw a flag coming right at me, generally holding. Yeah, I think uh, I think Luke uh, McDonald kind of got caught up there, and um, looks like they're going to call it on him, I think. But um, yeah, that was an interesting type of formation and an interesting type of play there. Well, they've, they've used that formation, a tight bunch, Right on the right off the end. You, you you pay attention to that kind of thing more than I do. Well, right? I kind of like you know that's the strategy of the game, right? What are you trying like to do? <laughs> At this point, we're just trying to big, run the clock. I'm a big picture guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the penalty that stopped the clock at 5:45. It's third and let's call it 17. Bernardin with the snap, hands off to Mulvaney, cuts outside, and another hold, but I don't think they'll call that one. Mulvaney gets the corner, and he is hit pretty hard. And I don't know who's on the edge, but number 22 on the defense was being held pretty well in order for him to get the corner. But nonetheless, he gets down the sideline all the way to about the 10. Yeah, Mulvaney did a nice job getting around the corner there, and then he showed a nice little burst, um, you know, nice footwork staying in bounds. And now the Hillers, you know, the, and again, the, these kids that are out here right now, they don't know what the score is. All they know yeah, right. is they're out there playing right. varsity football, yeah, that, and they want to get in the end zone. It's a valid point. You know, we had ch uh, kids that came up through the program, and their first time, and it was a big night. Oh, well, heck yeah. And I don't know if this is their first time out, but certainly uh, a big night for number 31. Oh, he's a big boy. Tommy Bernard. No, that's that, that's not Tommy Bernard. No, well, I don't know. It's, uh, Jay Golden's calling Tommy Bernard, but it was number 31. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess there's a Robbie Bernard oh. and a Tommy Bernard. Okay, 30. That it's was, Tommy Bernard, number 31 Tommy on the carry. Tommy Bernard, who must have came from the fullback spot, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't know, but he, he looks like a pretty big kid. And uh, he kind of just rumbled in there. He's 6'1", 160. He's a sophomore. Um, looks like he ran the ball pretty hard there. We'll give him a 10-yard run. Sure. For Tommy Bernardin. And that's Kelly again with his sixth extra point. That's 42 to nothing. Uh, let's put the nail in the coffin here. This can't. Uh, this game can't get over fast enough for Medfield. Yeah, again, at this at this point, you just want to kind of, you know, get the get the playing time here for the uh, for the subs, and you know, get off the field healthy, and and let's move on and uh, and and start thinking ahead. Now, let's it's gonna be interesting. How many push-ups are these girls gonna do? Here? Well, a lot of times they stop. You know, they've been out of shape here the last couple of weeks, so they may not be quite ready for this. Oh, I don't know if they can kick out 42. I remember back in the day when we used to rock up 42 all the time. Those those <laughs> those kids would do it. They're, they'd get the 30 maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's they're yeah, doing a, it. There's a few. Hey, I'm not going to judge anybody. No, you're right. Right, form. right, right. Those, that's like my push-ups right there. So that all yeah. everything counts. I, I don't bend do push-ups anymore. You bend the elbow. That counts. All right. I don't care how deep you go. All right, good job, girls. Nice All effort. Right. Nice little, effort. Little John Denver to get the kickoff going here. Kelly's fairly deep, going to the left, and it's going to be it's going to be number seven, Geitzer, and he gets stacked up around the 28-yard line. Where the Warriors will take over first and ten at the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Well, another, another beautiful night. It was a nice crowd here for homecoming. They have the balloons going here. Yeah, it's always a, a good event. You know, the, the fall season, you go to any, any college football game and you get the homecoming, you get people out doing their thing. The Hill of Grillas were here earlier today. and That's been a nice tradition, and that started, I would say. Uh, five, six years ago? Yeah, maybe about that, yeah. It was, and it used to be. I remember, I remember giving the kids money out of my pocket. <laughs> I remember walking in and giving the kids like twenty bucks or forty bucks or whatever. Towards, I'll take I'll take twenty bucks. because they were just doing it on their own. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, and it was awesome. And then, and then Coach Gerard, you know, kind of took it over. And it comes from the football program now. They give those kids money and they tailgate. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's yeah, awesome. It's really a good thing. Just adds to the atmosphere that just makes high school football so cool. I see, uh, Junior Sam. Lazau, Lazau, now in at the in the off in the defensive line, and a flea flicker, and it's wide open too. Uh, and he's going to get loose. Uh, number twenty-two is going to carry him down at the 
at the about the three yard line, number 22, Brian Hurley Her makes the tackle down and around the two yard line, three yeah, yard line, which is a touch. That was a touchdown saving tackle there. Did you happen to see who caught that ball? No, I didn't. No. It was um, it was kind of a flea flicker deal. It was, though. yep. Could have been number seven. And he broke Got a tackle, number three. N number three, James Wilder, the sophomore, caught it down the right sideline, cut inside a tackler, and got all the way down to the three before he was tackled quite nicely by number 22, Brian Early. And we got a timeout. I didn't see you called the timeout at 4.17 to go. So this is, you know, here, here we go. I mean, Hopkinton's trying to preserve the shutout. Sure, they, they want that. Yep. And, uh, and and kudos to Medfield for not going, you know, away quietly and trying to trying to get in the end zone. They ran a, a trick play. Kid made a nice catch, broke a tackle, and, and, and got it down to the three-yard line. So um, we'll see what Coach McClain dials up for the uh, – for the for the Hillers and see if we can keep them out and, and, and hold on to this uh, hold on to this shutout. Who else? What are the kids we got out there? Number fifteen, young young Sorry. Wang. Number, uh, 40, number forty, Christian McDonald. <laughs> number seventy six looks like a big boy. Sam yeah, Lizzo. Yeah, called him. I saw him coming out. Okay, so it's first and goal from about the five. And number 33 gets the corner. The workhorse, Junta, okay, makes so it in the right corner for a touchdown. He's been on the field the whole time. So Medfield did keep some of their starters in, which is fine. Um, he had the corner the whole way. Uh, there was some good perimeter blocking there, and they kind of just was able to walk in to get the, get the Warriors on the board. And Junta's only a, a junior, so he'll be back next year. Something to build on with the running game. Uh, I don't know if the quarterback that got hurt was a senior. I think he was actually. I think I, I think I did see that that he was a senior. I'm looking on their roster for another quarterback that I don't. Oh, uh, could have been Matt. No, Matt Leonard's not a. I don't see a senior quarterback on there other than the one that's playing Ryan. Oh no, I'm sorry. Ryan Murray's only a sophomore. I called him a senior. He's only a sophomore, Who? Don. The quarterback, Ryan Murray. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the the. the Biscone, who's ahead of him in the roster here. Michael Biscone, the wide receiver, is a senior. But Murray is only a sophomore. Sorry for that. So maybe there's something to build on here with the Medfield Warriors. Uh, okay, so a couple of scores here from um, from the TVL. Dover Shirt. Sherburne is leading Bellingham 21-6. to six. Uh, It's actually 42-7 to seven now. That, that's us. We're oh, that's us. We're oh, okay. forty-two to I'm seven sorry. now. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Trojan's got me all good doing all kind of things here. I apologize. And trying to take me out of my comfort zone, I think. Rick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, we were talking about the you know the TVL, the winner of the Ashland Hopkinton or the Ashland Holliston game, which I believe is next week at Holliston. Um, which should be an interesting game. I mean, having seen both teams, I would give the edge to Holliston, um, you know, especially at home. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we know that uh, Ashland has two quarterbacks that they – They're a physical they, team, too. That they use equally. Yeah. And and both will throw. And there's a, a fair catch by Deloya, but he didn't catch it. He called Saperocious it. did. Saparosius doesn't look too happy either. It looks well, like he the problem to is, it. well, he, he doesn't know he's doing it, right, and he, right, if he right. takes off, it's a penalty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if they didn't do that, and they it, be a Right. <laughs> yeah, the rule is, though, you don't go backwards to get the ball. I don't know if Saparosius had to go backwards to get it, but you let the up guy come get it, and you go block. So it looks like, by the way they're huddling up, it's going to be Bretton as quarterback. And number 15. Running in there real yeah, quick. Yeah, Young Wang, the senior. Young Wang, he's, he's not, he's he's not wasting any yeah, time getting in there. Well, somebody yelled his name. Yes, sir, I'm off. 
So it looks like they went back to Breton as quarterback. And he fakes and he comes out to the right. And he's got a little bit of room, but he's tackled by about three Warriors at about the 30-yard line, maybe the 29-yard line. Did a nice job uh, with that with that read option there. Kept it, and uh, you know, Medfield had it covered, but he got what he could out of that. So it brings up uh, second and two, call it, at, from the 30. As the clock keeps on running, 3.30 to go in the game. And Mulvaney gets to the outside, and he gets the corner, and he's certainly a first down. Gets out to about the 45-yard line if he didn't step out of bounds. Yeah, it looks and he like stayed in. He oh, stayed he in. Stay yeah, in the clock's still good. going. So it's 3.10 to go. As it looks like the Hopping and Hillers will move to 3-3 three and three on the year with a big game against Westwood, Westwood next week to determine. I'm guessing maybe they're in it anyway, but certainly if they win, they're in the playoffs. And then I guess we'll just have to see as far as uh, – the next game will be bringing you here at home. Um, it, it'll it'll be up to the. Uh, I'm guessing if they win a playoff game, they'll be away for any first playoff game. But if they win, they'll still be away. Right. If they lose, it probably hosts the game. Correct. That next week. Right. So have to stay tuned for the playoff schedule as it comes out, and that'll come out uh, probably in about a week and a half. On the 26th of October, maybe it'll come out. Well, we won't know that, Mike. Yeah, we don't know we don't that, know. Mike. No. We don't know. In fact, we were saying I think it's a good chance it'll be away. Oh, a fake pitch, and uh, that's a different quarterback. That's now uh, Bernardin back in there, taking a book out of uh, Ashland. So with two minutes to go, as we wind this down, we certainly need to thank our camera folks as it got chilly out there tonight. Denise Antaki still wearing shorts, by the way. That's one tough cookie. And Tom Diggs and Samantha Diggs up there uh, doing their thing. So we thank them for being out in the cold. It's Don and I sit here in our <laughs> in a nice warm booth here. And uh, Mike Tarosian obviously directing everything. One of the smoothest operations I think I've ever been around. Uh, Absolutely. Pros oh, nice, nice run, nice tackle there as he's slow getting up. Mulvaney kind of. He got hit pretty hard as he spun. Well, they're still playing football out there. I mean, it's you know, it's uh, it's it's still a uh, an aggressive, violent game, and you better be ready to play it. I don't care if you're first string, second string, or third string. Well, look, I can hear the tunes cranking as we get under a minute here. Uh, fans are having a good time. Bernard and quick pitch out to Mulvaney. Nope, nope. Yeah, that is Mulvaney. He cuts it up for a first down. And we only need two more plays to call it a night, Don. So I, yeah, as we, maybe one. I think one play does it here. As we as we wrap this up, it uh, looks like it's going to be a 42-7 to Hawking in victory. Two passes, Kelleher to DeLoyer, Kelleher to Kelly. Put them up 14 to nothing in the... Three Matt Brown rushing touchdowns put him up 35 to nothing in the third. We got a late touchdown by Tommy Bernardin, a 10-yard scamper that put him up 42 to nothing. And Medfield scored a very late touchdown. Junta, a five-yard run made it 42 to seven. So, I, I, you know, overall, you had to like what you saw today, Don. Yeah, for sure. Again, this, is, this team needed this. Um, it was a confidence builder for them. And, um, you know, again, it, you know, those were two tough weeks, Rick. Yeah. Losing to Ashland like they lost to them and then going into Holliston and, you know, that tough game. So, th this gets their feet under them again. And, hey, all they can do is play who's in front of them. And, and that starts with Westwood next week. So, we'll see what happens. Okay. And four. Denise Antaki, Tom Diggs, Samantha Diggs, 
Mike DeRosian. He is Dandy Don Lehman. I am Rick Casino. We will see you next time.